My one hope in doing this video is that people will leave the twists and the swerves and the and the screwing around out of it for this video. Please take this video in the genuine, respectful manner that I mean it to be in. All right. I know I do a lot of vids that uh, are controversial, a lot of vids that rub people the wrong way, a lot of vids where people want to twist my words a little bit here and there, and normally I would let it roll off my back. Normally I would go, you know, this is just the way the YWC is, this is the way the internet is, the IWC, whatever. I'm asking you guys in this instance to please just take this video at face value. Just take this video in the positive, respectful context that I mean it to be in. And that's all I can really ask for, isn't it? Nothing says Valentine's Day weekend like a one liter bottle of Smirnoff Ice, does it? Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? It's your buddy, it's your pal Spaz Phoenix. The YWC Reality Check here with a video that's about, if you follow most people's opinions, about six days late. I said during my Raw review that I was going to give my thoughts and feelings on the Daniel Bryan retirement. Um, once I'd had a couple of days to let it sink in, let me uh, get my thoughts together. Um, and really, you don't want to give a gut reaction to something like that, do you? Um, so, we have this video. Uh, this is not before anybody says anything. Before, <laughs> I know, I know. Everybody thinks that this is going to be some bash. Everybody thinks that I'm going to sit here and sing the Na Na Goodbye song or something like that. Or some, some uh, Spaz is going to pull some dick move, isn't he? I, uh, the answer is no. The answer is I wanted to sort of funnel all the different thoughts about Daniel Bryan's retirement into one solid concrete idea and have a a definite um, a definite direction a definite point to the video that I was going to make about Daniel Bryan's retirement the thing is because it's such a multifaceted thing for wrestling for the WWE for the fans for the Bryan fans specifically you can't really do that so I've just on this paper, uh, I've scribbled down, and you know how great my writing is, I've scribbled down some random thoughts that I've had throughout the week. Uh, some of them are about Daniel Bryan, some of them are about the WWE, some of them are about uh, various surrounding issues. Now, I want to say something right now. In this video, I'm going to say some things about Daniel Bryan fans. People aren't going to like some of them. I'm going to say some things in defense of the WWE. People are not going to like those either. I have to reiterate what I said in my opening shtick there. None of that is to in any way degrade the career of Daniel Bryan, the impact of his retiring, anything like that. These are just my thoughts in the week um, the week preceding after after Daniel Bryan made his big announcement that he was that he was in fact retiring. Now the first one, and it, it's the most obvious, and it's the fans' gut reaction on the Wednesday night is that it sucks. <laughs> Let's be real. It's sad. It sucks. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Him retiring is not unfortunate. Now, let me be very careful with the way I say that. Him retiring has to happen. What's unfortunate is what got us to this place, and it's his, uh, his cavalcade of injuries throughout his career, and the ones that have um, given him brain injuries, uh, neck injuries, shoulder injuries, uh, etc., to the point where doctors and the WWE and Brian himself have had to say, yeah, as much as we would love this, uh, this uh, fairy tale story to go on, and this career to go on, because he's only like 30-something, uh, he's got a lot of career theoretically ahead of him, you you just can't. Uh, that's the bottom line. Um, I know there's some other companies that would pull some shady business and ignore the doctors or not have doctors because they operate out of a gymnasium somewhere. Um, in this in this regard, I think Daniel Bryan is very fortunate to work with the WWE in the sense of yeah, we've had a lot of shit happen with brain injuries. Chris Benoit, example one, um, and end of the day, 
we can't have this happen. We can't have horrible things happening. We can't you go have you going out and doing horrible things to other people. We can't have your horrible thing in, impacting our show, and we don't want horrible things to happen to you. Um, say what you want about WWE, but WWE doesn't want any of that to happen, do they? No, no, no. So it's sad. It's unfortunate. It sucks. There's there's dream matches that we want to see that we're not going to see. We're not going to see Brian versus Ambrose or Brian versus Rollins or Brian versus AJ Styles or Brian versus Kevin Owens or Brian versus is Kalisto or whoever whoever you had in your fantasy WrestleMania for Daniel Bryan to go up against and I don't remember who I had I think it was uh, I think it was Rey Mysterio because I was kind of being a dick that day but um, they're not gonna happen and that sucks and there's nothing to there's nothing I can say it throughout the rest of this video that's going to make that not suck <laughs> um, people will say well you know Spaz you didn't want him to come back you you hated him no I did not hate Brian Danielson, the person, Brian Danielson, the talent. I hated Daniel Bryan, the uh, the WWE creation, which was far too, far closer to John Cena than anybody wanted to admit. I don't think they did him any favors. I think Team Hell No was an incredible injustice to Daniel Bryan. I think, um, you know, the short title runs he had, um, the fact that they focused on the yes chant and, 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 the, and the goat gimmicks and all that rather than his wrestling was horrible. The way they booked him... At WrestleMania, uh, I know it did a lot for a lot of people. It was a great Cinderella feel-good moment for a lot of purebred Daniel Bryan fans. In in my case, you guys know that have been following this channel, that WrestleMania distanced me from Daniel Bryan so much because it pulled me as a fan so far out of that 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 cushy little area that wrestling fans sit in of the suspension of disbelief so that you can enjoy a show it, it's just there's there's too much there there is some superman ism here he is the meredith gray of the wwe and that's not his fault that was the wwe's fault so when i talk about when i ever when i ever talk about my dislike for daniel bryan please understand and it always has been it always has been daniel bryan the wwe creation not bryan danielson the talent um you guys know and and i've said it i said it the other day on my uh on my nxt review i don't watch indie stuff i i rely on people that do watch indie stuff to tell me a lot of things here's the the one and only time you'll hear me give Delex Man a lot of credit. You guys know I have my issues with Delex Man, but here is where I will give him a lot of credit. The minute Daniel Bryan touched WWE, he was excited. And when I was talking to him, when I was on good terms with him at the time, he's saying, "Oh, you know, check him out from ROH, the American Dragon, Bryan Danielson. Uh, check him out here. Check him out there, etc." The fact that they fired him so so uh, so quick after putting him onto the main roster for the for the whole electrical cord incident was ridiculous. And and. Um, as much as I don't agree with Deluxe Man on a lot of things, his excitement for Daniel Bryan, uh, his 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 tunnel vision support of Daniel Bryan, I will say, is something to be commended. So I know there's not a chance in a million years that Alex is watching this video, but anybody that does, please, you know, pass on to him that I will say the one thing that I I will give him credit for is his like I say his tunnel vision um, support and and love as a fan for Daniel Bryan um, and he did went back when we were cool um, show me some stuff from ROH and he, he, here check check out his match with so and so and his match with so and so uh, and then they talked about um, you know him and CM Punk um, which I didn't get to see and I purposely when they the first time they announced Daniel Bryan versus CM Punk. Uh, at a pay-per-view, uh, I knew it was going to be something special. I didn't know it was going to be something as amazing as what we got. Uh, what we got with those series of matches of Daniel Bryan and CM Punk without Kane being thrown in the mix, because that was disastrous, was probably some of the best wrestling, probably one of some of my favorite wrestling main event. Not sports entertainment, not pro wrestling. Why are we beeping? Why is this a thing? Just saying. It was probably some of my... Why? Seriously? There. That's how we do that. Uh, probably some of the best wrestling uh, pay-per-view main events I have seen in quite some time. And I feel privileged to have seen it. I feel privileged to have... Uh, I feel privileged that WWE uh, got their hands on Daniel Bryan. I feel privileged as a WWE fan that WWE got to present that to me, if that, if that makes sense. Daniel Bryan, amazing talent amazing talent not for the reasons that most people say not for the yes chant 
No, uh, because there is an element to that where people use the yes chant for more than Daniel Bryan. The commentators actually said it on Raw. People are using yes chants at other events, not even knowing who originated it, which means it's not for Daniel Bryan. It's for whatever they're they're doing now. Um, and there's the underlying thing of fans at a live event like to participate. They like to chant stuff. I don't base my my opinion of Daniel Bryan's following on the yes chant or the no chant or the uh, or or you know the takeover because the takeover was manufactured at the end of the day the 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 uh, the Occupy Raw when they had all the fans in the ring those weren't fans from the audience those those were those were extras those were doubles or or whatever brought in by WWE to advance a storyline which was great um, and it represented what was happening in the in the real audience but I don't think that was the the focal point where most people would say it is the focal point is that Daniel Bryan's a fantastic wrestler and along with guys like Rey Mysterio with guys like CM Punk Shawn Michaels Jeff Hardy, uh, Bret Hart, etc., broke the mold of main eventers or big guys. Um, you guys know that I have my opinions as they are about Rey Mysterio, but he did do that. He Did he get a Superman moment as well to get there? Absolutely. That's another story for an, an, another topic for another vid. But he does get to name add his name to that list of people that have broken that barrier, and good for him. He deserves that. Um, there's a t-shirt on WWE Shop for the Thank You Daniel Bryan. I have the... Uh, uh, the Jericho uh, Y25J shirt with all his titles listed on it. I have the Edge uh, Done It All, Won It All shirt with all his accomplishments on the back. They've done one for Daniel Bryan as well, and it's the hashtag Thank You Daniel uh, t-shirt, and it's got all his accomplishments on the back, all the titles, King of the Rings, um, and and stuff like that that he's won. And the, the accomplishment at the top that I think is kind of funny is not a title, it's the leader of the Yes movement, which is is... While I don't like it, while it doesn't properly explain what I'm trying to say, I do like it. He did have a he did have a fantastic following. Now, whether those are indie marks or whether those are people that followed him from ROH or whether those are people like me who just watched WWE and let him win us over talent wise once he got here, he had a hell of a following. Nobody can nobody can. Uh, Nobody can negate that. Nobody can ever take that away from him. Nobody can ever take his WrestleMania moment away from him, even though I have the opinions that I have of that. He had it, and good for him, and nobody can take it away from him. Um, it's unfortunate. It sucks. Selfishly, as fans, we want him on our TV longer. Is that is that not the thing at the end of the day? Uh, it is selfish, but it, it, it's, it's not in the same way, because we want him because he earned it. Um, now, the other side of that coin is... As I say, he had to retire now. He had to retire now because be, with him retiring now, he can still say he's healthy. He can still go on and have a good quality of life. He can be there for his family. He can, <laughs> like he said in his promo, he can basically go home and make Bree scream yes, yes, yes until she gives him kids. Uh, he's, he's healthy and well and able enough to be there for his wife actively, be there for his kids when the time comes actively. And he's young enough in his career that, or in his life that he can turn around, find something else that he loves. And whatever else he does that he loves, he's got himself a name and he's got himself some recognition so he can do that. He could go in a year, come back and be commentating Raw, commentating SmackDown. He could, you know, go to the dark side uh, and, you know, be uh, be a backstage agent or a commentator or whatever for something like TNA or ROH. A lot of people have said he should go be a trainer uh, in the in the NXT at the Performance Center in, uh, in Florida there. Um, I think that would be a tremendous asset to that to that training center. Uh, I mean, you've already got guys down there like Billy Gunn, William Regal, yeah, Dusty Rhodes before he passed away, R.I.P. Um, he'd be he'd be an excellent guy, especially with the uh, the fact that you got Billy Gunn down there and you got William Regal down there who are grapplers and wrestlers, and but you've got a lot of high flying guys, you got a lot of risk taking guys in NXT that could benefit from somebody like Daniel Bryan who knows what it's like to fight that style. He could do whatever he wants. So at least, and I know this doesn't take any of the sting out of it, but at least it happened now while he's got time to turn the rest of his life around and have a rest of his life. Now, I want you guys to come along with me for a second and think, take some solace in the rightness of the fact that he retired because if he hadn't, um, bad things could have happened. Then that's that's it at the end of the day. 
Um, he could have had, he said it on, in his promo, he could have had brain damage, he could have put himself in a coma, he could have been paralyzed, and, of, and I mean, of course, the ultimate, uh, the ultimate end of all of that is he could have died. And nobody wants that. I don't care who you like or don't like. I don't care whether you're talking about Daniel Bryan or The Miz or Dean Ambrose or The Big Show or Seth Rollins or Kane or so-and-so or Jack Swagger or AJ Styles. You don't want anybody to die unless you're incredibly, incredibly crazy. Um, so we've avoided all of that. I mean, he's going to be suffering the repercussions of what has happened to him so far uh, throughout his life. He's going to feel it. I'm sure he's going to feel it in his head. He's going to have headaches or neck issues later on in his, in his life or, um, you know, arthritis or something along those lines. But he, he's not nearly as bad as he could be. And he avoided all of those um, final results, I guess you could say. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not very, I'm not very eloquent in this video because I've just got a couple of scratched notes and I'm mostly uh, just trying to speak from you guys or speak to you guys from the heart because it is, it's not a, it's not a show that I'm analyzing here. It's not a, hey, WWE did this and this is what I think about it and here's all my points and uh, I'm just mostly speaking from here uh so if i'm not eloquent or animated or entertaining or or anything along those lines i i'm sorry this is like i say just the thoughts that i've had in the past couple of days uh trying as i say uh, come along with me for a second trying to find silver linings in things there are a couple of things that are avoided in WWE currently by Daniel Bryan not being there. Now, here's where I go, and this is nothing to do with Daniel Bryan and everything to do with the small asshole portion of his fan base. Um, anybody that Daniel Bryan wrestled when he came back would have been buried, and not by WWE. By the by, by the fans because they could love somebody. They could love that Kevin Owens is there. They could love that 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 uh, AJ Styles is there. That Austin Aries just started in NXT, so he's coming up soon. And they could love all those guys, but put them up against Daniel Bryan, and they better lose or they're going to get booed out of the building. Uh, I, I I've referred to it before as the Bryan or bust mentality that some of his fans have. And let me let me underscore this. I say some. I say some. I say the bottom of the barrel two or three or five percent vocal minority of his fans. This is not in any way to say that every Daniel Bryan fan is like this. So please, please, I'm I'm asking you guys honestly to understand that that I mean a very small portion of his fan base. Um the other thing about it is is his fans, not necessarily the assholes, but the rest of them, uh have sort of been sitting on hold. Uh, waiting for Daniel Bryan to come back, kind of like the disciples waiting for Jesus, if you want a good comparison. Um, where there's other guys that they like, there's other guys that they cheer for, but that spot at the top of their totem pole has been reserved for Daniel Bryan because Daniel Bryan's coming back. Of course he's coming back. He has to come back. How could he not come back? Um, as a wrestling fan, you you wanted to believe that it was a certainty that he was coming back, so you saved that spot for him. And I don't and I don't blame people for that. I really don't because I still hold that spot that I have for uh, for when Jeff Hardy comes back and and has his final run in WWE. I, I firmly believe it's going to happen. I firmly believe as a wrestling fan, it has to happen. Is that guaranteed? No, but I'm holding on to that spot, much like a lot of people held on to that spot in their fandom for Daniel Bryan. Um, what this does is it puts a punctuation point on the statement that that is not going to happen. Now, while that sucks, it does, in all of our hearts and minds, open up that spot. You can latch on to the next... You can make an, somebody else that's on the roster right now that probably needs your support more than Daniel Bryan does, and you can support them, and you can cheer for them, and you can buy their t-shirt, and you can... Not that you wouldn't have anyway, but you can throw more of your fandom in to it because Daniel Bryan symbolically came out on Raw and handed, handed the WWE fan base over to whoever's going to come after him. And that's really cool. And I love his send off on Raw. The fact that they made Raw go an extra half hour so that he could finish his send off properly. And even after that went off onto the WWE network, that's a big thing. They didn't have to do that. That was great. It was, it was good. And it was all good. I mean, it led to the Titus O'Neil thing, which I've already done a video on, but that's one small stain on another, on an otherwise very, very powerful moment. Um, 
Daniel Bryan passing the torch and, and saying, you know, coming out and saying, you guys can enjoy other wrestlers. Uh, I'm not going to be here anymore, but I'm okay. This is my last night as a wrestler. I have a new life starting tomorrow. And it was kind of like, to, for the wrestling fans that were waiting for him to come back, it was like passing the torch. It's like, okay, go find somebody that you can get behind like you got behind me. Um, we can find a new underdog. Uh, everybody loves an underdog. Uh, I, I've harped on it as much as anybody else. Uh, anybody can be an underdog as long as WWE writes you that way. I halfway believe that. Not that Daniel Bryan didn't have that following, but I do halfway believe that. And there's um, four people, four guys, and this is just an example. This is, guys, this is, again, my word is not gospel. This is just my opinion. There's four guys off the top of my head that could fill that lovable, universally loved underdog character, and that's Sami Zayn, Hideo Itami, Kalisto, and the newly acquired AJ Styles. AJ Styles is by no means an underdog, by no means a rookie, like he's being portrayed, but the fact that WWE's portraying him that way is going to piss fans off and put fans behind him right out of the gate. Kalisto's the smallest guy on the roster right now, I think. People love him. He's a lot of fun. Hideo Itami, same thing. Sami Zayn is another one of those guys that I heard about, like Daniel Bryan, and I see a lot of... I hate I hate when people make the expression, oh, so-and-so is the next so-and-so, so I'm not trying to do that. But I see a lot of the same appeal that Daniel Bryan had to the fans, the the same fight, the same vigor, the same uh, stick-to-itiveness, pugnaciousness, whatever you want to call it, in Sami Zayn. And I saw it the minute he debuted in NXT, and people already had his back. The minute he debuted in NXT, and he immediately grabbed my attention. Um, Sami Zayn, I, I, I fully believe is not the next Daniel Bryan, but he will be WWE's next Daniel Bryan-esque babyface. Um, that's just my opinion. Like I say, you could do it with Hideo Itami when he comes back. Kalisto, they're already kind of doing it, which is cool. AJ Styles, they're setting it up in slightly a different way, obviously. Um, in in the days like, like they are today, where we're actually acknowledging where somebody came from, I think it'll be a lot better for somebody like AJ Styles uh, to get that kind of a rub and that kind of recognition. Um, so you can do it. You can, like, the the emotion that fans put behind Daniel Bryan and the kind of emotion they put behind Daniel Bryan gives Sami Zayn a couple of years and you could have that in... I'm not saying... Again, I have to. I have to clarify this. I have. I want to. From the bottom of my heart, I want to make this clear. I'm not saying Sami Zayn's going to pop up from NXT and replace Daniel Bryan. I'm saying we can have another one, if 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 that makes sense. And I hope that doesn't sound offensive. Now, the decision for Daniel Bryan to retire, the decision for Daniel Bryan to not be able to wrestle anymore, from the WWE's point of view, now you have to you have to assume that this is a decision that's made three ways. It's made by Bryan, it's made by the medical staff, and it's made by WWE as a company. Um, a lot a lot of uh, people before Monday Night Raw were saying WWE wasn't letting him wrestle. Oh, he's cleared, uh, but he's not cleared enough for WWE. Now, I have to stick up for WWE here, guys, and I know that's not going to make me popular, but I hope you stick with me for just a second. You run a lot of risks, and I don't just mean literal risks, when you have somebody like Daniel Bryan on your roster. Now, fans will want him to be champion. If he had come back, fans would want him to be a champion. A champion. Any champion of any kind. But... There's no way WWE would have let Daniel Bryan have a third strike. They gave him the biggest moment in WrestleMania history to acquire the the undisputed WWE Championship, and then he got injured. Not his fault, but he got injured. He had to give it up. And every time, I'm sorry, I know it's a storyline, I know belts are just props, but hear me out on this one. Every time you give up a title and they have to magically pull another one out of their ass, that champion is less and less and less legitimate. You are not the champion unless you beat the former champion. And if you do that, the more you do that, and they have done it millions and millions of times through the course of all the different belts in the WWE, the ones they've created out of thin air, the ones that they've amalgamated with other belts, the ones that they've had somebody injure or, or quit or for whatever reason, have to give up the belt or what it, whatever storyline made them give up the belt. Every time you take the belt off a champion and hand it to somebody else, it's it becomes less and less and less legitimate. Daniel Bryan got the biggest moment in the world handed to him at WrestleMania 30. Well-deserved, yes. Over the top, absolutely. They made him the champion. They gave the fans what they wanted. 
Um, and a little while later, they had to take it off him because he couldn't wrestle. He came back. He had the big, the big fight feel, the big fight story. Everybody was pissed off that he wasn't in the Rumble, but then he got into the ladder match. Uh, following WrestleMania, they gave him the IC title. And he had to give it up because of injuries. And he even said in his promo when he gave up the Intercontinental Championship, this is like deja vu all over again. Um, and it's the and it's the saddest irony that there is, to be perfectly honest with you. But I don't believe that WWE would have put another belt on him. Even if he was, quote unquote, able to come back, I don't think they would have run that risk a third time. I just don't think that they would have. And that would have driven both Brian nuts and the fans nuts. If you're a wrestler and you're not there looking for some kind of gold and you know you're not going to get any gold, what else are you driven by other than whatever story they can throw together? And the fans want to cheer somebody and they... Whoever you cheer for in the WWE is ultimately going towards their recognition, their success, and those successes come in the form of gold. Um, so for Daniel Bryan to come back for another, say, a two-year run and go on a two-year title drought would just have driven the fans even crazier. It would have driven the uh, conspiracy theorists crazy more. The people that are cra that are crazy and angry about how talent is treated in the WWE would have been upset more. It would have done more harm than good. Now... As I said, um, you also run the risk of a feud going stale. Um, other than titles, the next thing you have to worry about when you're a wrestler is your opponent, is your is your enemy in your feuds. Uh, now they could spend a whole bunch of time building up. Oh, I don't know. Uh, AJ, or Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles for SummerSlam now they could do all this and all that and all this and all that and they could build it up for say two months that they've got this great feud going on they're going to have the blow off match at SummerSlam he injures himself the week before SummerSlam not only does it suck not only do they have nothing to do nothing to fill that spot at SummerSlam but now where does AJ Styles go from here it, it, it goes stale, it goes nowhere. Not only does he not have that great match at SummerSlam, they don't have any time to book him into another one that doesn't seem just like it's, that, just like it's thrown together. Um, so you run the risk of a stale feud impacting the guy that he would have worked with if he got injured again. Um, WWE, as a company, unfortunately, have to consider the legal liabilities. If he's in there and he gets injured, if he's in there and, God forbid, he dies... If he's in there and his injury causes him to fuck something up and somebody else gets injured, WWE legally has to watch their ass. I'm not saying Daniel Bryan's a dick and would have tried to sap the company for every penny that they have. I'm not making any of those accusations. But as a company, as such a guarded PC, PG, family-friendly form of entertainment, legally they would be fucked if anything happened to Daniel Bryan. And honestly, unless you think WWE and Vince McMahon are the devil himself, they don't want Daniel Bryan to get hurt. On on the take out take out the corporate, take out the financial, take out the legal, take out the entertainment, take out the athleticism, person to person, man to man, I have I I I cannot believe that Vince McMahon or WWE or Triple H would wantonly risk the injury or death of another human being, regardless of who it is. Uh, I firmly believe that. And, and if you believe that WWE is that callous and that evil, and you're still watching, I'm going to say that you're full of shit. That's, it, it, it is what it is. Like, th this could have been a lot worse. Uh, I'm not saying it's not sad. Like I say, I go back to my initial point. The initial point is this fucking sucks. I get it. It's true. It is. I'm just trying to give you guys something to think about. Think about, well, what if? What if he'd been injured? What if he was in a coma? What if next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing? Um, you got to think about WWE moving forward. WWE has moved forward. Um, and this is where I'm going to sound a bit cold. This is where I'm going to sound like I'm devaluing Daniel Bryan, and I hope you don't think so. WWE moved on after Andre. They moved on after Bruno. They moved on after Hogan, after Warrior, after Savage, after Jake the Snake. They moved on after Bret Hart. They moved on after Stone Cold Steve Austin. They moved on after Shawn Michaels. They moved on after The Rock. They moved on after Triple H was an active competitor. They moved on after the New Age Outlaws. They moved on after the Legion of Doom. They moved on after... 
Eddie Guerrero. They moved on after Chris Benoit. They moved on recently after uh, Rey Mysterio left. They've moved on. They moved on since Edge. They moved on since Jeff Hardy. Um, WWE has proven, sorry to say this, in the past two years, they can move on without Daniel Bryan. Uh, he won at WrestleMania 30 and dropped the belt and left shortly afterwards. He won at WrestleMania 31, dropped that belt, left shortly afterwards. So roughly we've gone two years where other people have picked up the ball. Other people have said, look, this guy dropped the torch, not of his own fault. Daniel Bryan dropped the torch, dropped the ball, whatever you want to say. Respectfully, we need to pick it up. We're, we've got a big gaping missing hole in the WWE. We we need to plug it. We need to fill it. We need to develop it. We need to help that that hole grow whole again. Um, you know, it's like we took we, we took the piercing out of our ear. I've got an earring. I'm looking at it in the camera while I'm talking to you guys. So this is the metaphor I'm coming up with. If I take this out, it's been here for a long time. If I take that out, eventually my ear is going to recognize that it's not there anymore. It's going to grow and it's going to grow and it's going to grow. It might not ever fully close again. WWE will never quite be the same as it was without Daniel Bryan or without Guerrero or Benoit or Hart or Angle or Michaels or Rock or Austin or Hogan or Warrior or Bruno or Andre or anybody. It's never quite the same, but it's going to soldier on. And... I hate to do this because once again I sound like I'm doing the whole like oh we don't need Brian we can just replace him I'm not indicating that we can replace Daniel Bryan I'm indicating that WWE can give us something new something different something new to cheer for something new to get invested in and in that vein just listen to a couple of names and I know right off the oh well WWE doesn't know how to use them WWE doesn't know how to do this and that and this and that and this and that uh, but you said the same thing with Daniel Bryan, and then look at what they did at WrestleMania 30 and 31, back-to-back Yeselmanias. So when you say, Daniel Bryan's gone, what the hell do I have to look forward to anymore? I have a few names. Ambrose, Zane, Owens, Balor, Styles, Kalisto, Neville, Becky Lynch, Sasha Banks, Bray Wyatt, Cesaro when he comes back, Emma, The Usos for some of us. <laughs> Enzo and Cass, the American Alpha, Luke Harper, Paige, some of us, Roman Reigns, Rusev, Seth Rollins when he comes back, Cody Rhodes, if Cody Rhodes ever breaks the Stardust thing, Tyler Breeze, if his push gets back up and going again, Tyson Kidd, if he's allowed to come back after his injuries, uh, The New Day, The Social Outcasts, and yes, I'm including The Social Outcasts in that, Alexa Bliss, Asuka, uh, if we ever see a resurgence of Alex Riley, uh, Bailey, Hideo Itami, these are just a couple of the names that make me sit here and say, yeah, Daniel Bryan, the injury sucks, but you know what? He's going to be okay in his life. He's not a wrestler anymore, but he's going to be okay. So what I want to say to you is names like these make me say, hey, Daniel Bryan's okay over here. WWE is okay over here. As fans, we're going to be okay over here. And that that's just... And I know I'm the guy that's just, you know, super positive all the time, and it annoys a lot of people, but I hope I can infect some of you with some of that positivity. Uh, the side note, the side fracture of all of this is if we can take anything good from this, and hopefully this does happen, uh, CM Punk and AJ Lee prove to us what will happen when somebody leaves is because um, we saw CM Punk leave and we saw the rousing of support the more people found out about why he left we couldn't support CM Punk anymore because he wasn't there anymore so what did we do we threw all of our support behind AJ Lee I'm really really hoping and this and this is gonna sound crazy or this is gonna sound like I'm being nostalgic or just being sympathetic or just being a sap or whatever I really hope that Daniel Bryan fans and wrestling fans in general will do the same thing for Brie Bella. I really do. And that's not because I'm just a guy over here and I like the Bellas and maybe yeah, I'm such an evil person. But genuinely, um, you know, here's a girl, or I shouldn't say a girl, I should say a, a, a woman, a talent on, on uh, in our universe who's got one husband who's got brain damage 
who can't wrestle anymore, and a sister who's got neck issues and could possibly never wrestle again, um, who has been the third wheel on the Team Bella thing for a while, who was second banana to her sister for a long time, um, who is basically booed for being Brie Bella, um, who's better in the ring than most people give her credit for, and I'm not saying that she should pull a Rey Mysterio and benefit from somebody else's misfortune, but if Daniel Bryan's not there anymore and you haven't said enough goodbye or sent enough respect to Daniel Bryan, send it through Brie Bella. Brie Bella's got a match in a couple of weeks at Fastlane. She's probably not going to win. Look at the way the story is going. Charlotte, Becky, and, and Sasha are going to go and have the triple threat main event at the triple threat women's main event at WrestleMania. That that much is pretty much written on the wall already. But at the very least, throw the love and support that you have for Daniel Bryan behind Brie Bella, even if it's just for one month. Because there's no way they're not going to turn her face. It'll be okay if you cheer her. Nobody's going to call you a bad wrestling fan for cheering Brie Bella. So... All your frustration, all your sympathy, all your support, all your appreciation for Daniel Bryan. In this instance, I'm going to say throw it behind Brie. Um, that's that's just me. Uh, a lot of people might disagree with that. A lot of people might disagree with that a lot. A lot of people might say that that makes me a hypocrite because of my issues, or because of my opinions on the Guerrero Mysterio thing, but that's an entirely different scenario for a different day, isn't it? Now, said I was going to defend WWE a little bit. Um... WWE gets a lot of shit, and they do. They get a lot of shit, and everything's WWE's fault when it happens to... When it happens to somebody we like, everything's WWE's fault. If it happens to somebody we don't give a shit about, it's kind of like, well, sucks to be them. Uh, if this was happening to The Miz right now, people would be laughing at him, which kind of makes me sick to my stomach, but whatever. Here's the thing. Um, <laughs> talk about an unfortunate or, or an unpopular opinion. There were a couple of people removed from the Raw when Daniel Bryan made his retirement speech, uh, because they were they were singing the goodbye song, the na 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 na, hey 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 goodbye. Um, now I will admit that um, whoever did that was a dick. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll be perfectly honest, but not everybody gets to go out the way Daniel Bryan went out. Uh, I think of Lita and her last match, for example. Her last match, she lost, and the match ended with Crime Time walking up and down the aisleway, throwing her underwear out into the crowd. So not everybody gets the respectful send-off that Daniel Bryan got. Um, I really hope we don't turn Daniel Bryan into Jesus Christ over the fact that he had to retire, because here's where my here's where the cynical part of me comes out, and here's where people think I'm going to be a bit of a dick. Um, if Miz came out next week and said he was retiring, uh, nobody would give a shit, which is unfortunate. Um, like say like say the 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 scenarios were similar. Like he got injured, he had to retire. Um, people out there are assholes. They would have done the na 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 hey 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 goodbye. Thing, and I don't think it would have been seen as this instant crime. It's bad. I'm not. I'm not saying that it wasn't bad. Um, you know, Daniel Bryan's story is really sad, and it's got a sad ending. Um, but people are out there. People are allowed to not like him. I I didn't like his character. I I like I say I respected him as a worker, but people are allowed to not like him. So be careful with that. Don't, like I say, uh, people think I'm being funny or, or that I'm trying to be offensive when I say this, but Daniel Bryan was a great wrestler. This is true. But he was a, he was a human being. Don't make him out to be Jesus Christ, because that doesn't help anybody. Um, I don't even know. People that want to blame WWE for this, I want you to think, keep a couple things in mind. Daniel Bryan had a stellar career, from what I hear, because uh, I can't speak to it because I didn't watch and wouldn't be fair for me to do so. But from what I, everything I hear, Daniel Bryan had a stellar career in the Indies, overseas in Japan, um, ROH specifically, um, and he said in his speech, most of his concussions and most of his injuries took place before WWE. So you got to keep that in mind. Uh, people that are yelling that they kept him away because they didn't want him to succeed. Daniel Bryan, behind John Cena and CM Punk, was probably one of their biggest merch sellers, one of their biggest money makers. So I'm gonna for that one. I'm gonna I'm gonna use a similar comparison 
to uh, to what I said about Titus O'Neil the other night, and it's the you can say that WWE hated him for whatever reason, but I don't think they're going to hate him so much so that they will stop putting him on the TV so that they could stop making him money. If they didn't think it was a risk, if they didn't think that it, there was a health risk, a legal risk, a financial risk, etc., they would have had him on TV. If you want to paint WWE as as greedy as they want as you want to paint them, would they not have put their biggest money maker on screen as soon as they possibly could? I gotta kind of call crap on that. Um, and the other thing is where I really, really just find some hypocrisy that makes me sad. Um, these same people that are that are screaming from the rooftops that they wouldn't let Daniel Bryan wrestle, they were keeping him away in a box somewhere. These are the same people that are mad that they forced CM Punk to wrestle. And you can't have it both ways. You know, you, you were unsafe with CM Punk. WWE knew he was injured and they made him wrestle anyway and they were so careless and rah 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 You want to be angry about that? Cool. I, I can understand that. You can't be angry with... You can't then turn around and be angry with them for literally doing the opposite and, and, and erring on the side of caution with Daniel Bryan. You can't. And, I mean, Daniel Bryan said it in his thing. He had a bunch of tests. He had a bunch of tests that said he was good to go. And then the last test that he took said, well, you know, maybe maybe you're not. So, I want to leave this in, in, in a respectful way. In, and as a respectful way as possible. And I want to end this video on a request. This is a request. This is from me going out to all of you out there. This is from me going out to all the Daniel Bryan fans. This is from me going out to anybody that was really, really hitting the chest with this news that we got this week. Like I say, especially the Daniel Bryan fans. Uh, all I can ask is please don't take this out on the WWE. Uh, WWE didn't injure him. WWE didn't... Um, not to sound mean, WWE didn't break his body, WWE didn't make his body fail on him the way it did. They didn't do that. So what I am saying to you, all of you, and this is my request from the bottom of my heart as a wrestling fan, as a wrestling fan watching a wrestling show week to week, three or four times a week now, because I'm kind of crazy, don't hijack WWE over this. Because this isn't CM Punk. This, this, it's a bad thing for me to end my video on. But the Daniel Bryan thing is not, is not WWE's fault. This is not a CM Punk situation. WWE pissed off CM Punk. He told them to fuck off and leave. WWE is the reason we don't see CM Punk anymore. I can, I can sign on to that logic. 110%. You want to be mad at WWE because they fucked a guy around enough that he was walking away from an amazing paycheck, and because of that, we don't get him on our TV screen anymore? Yeah, chant CM Punk. Chant CM Punk at Triple H. Chant CM Punk at Vince McMahon. Chant CM Punk at the WWE because they fucked up on that one. Don't do it with this. Because WWE didn't do this. Um... Whoever's writing, who, whoever's booking the story of life did this. And whoever's booking the story of life, whoever's booking the story of Daniel Bryan's life is an asshole because he got dealt a shitty hand and he had to retire. But that's not WWE's fault. And w, uh, Daniel Bryan, I cannot speak for Daniel Bryan. I don't know Daniel Bryan, but I've heard Daniel Bryan talk about what he does. He's not a superstar. He's not a celebrity. He's not a TV star. He's not a movie star. He doesn't want to be a rock star. Daniel Bryan was a wrestling, or, or sorry, was a pro wrestler through and through who loved what he did and he loved the product and he loved the, the genre of professional wrestling. I don't think you, I don't think you pay him any respect by fucking with the product that he put so much into as a way to remember him. I don't think that that's how it should be done. Anyways, I'm a lot into my vodka here. That being said, um, like I say, these are just the thoughts that I've been juggling around. I warned you guys at the beginning there'd be no point to this video. Uh, I'd be kind of all over the place and I'd just be uh, sort of rambling. And I haven't had a long ramble with you guys in a long while. The video is six days late. I apologize for that. I had to get the Titus O'Neil video out of the way. Uh, the Titus O'Neil video was a lot easier to do than this one. 
uh, I struggled with what I was going to say in this video. I didn't struggle with what I said in the Titus O'Neill video because that was more, this is my point, I'm going to make it. I don't have a point to make here. Um, it sucks. I'm trying to find a silver lining. Uh, you guys know me. I'll, 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 I'll shine up a turd if I have to. But, uh, yeah, this is pretty shit. <laughs> And there's not really much else to say, so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to call it a night with you guys. Thanks for the chat. I've been Spaz, your YWC Reality Check. Subscribe up there. Talk down there. Start a conversation. Keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I'll talk to each and every last one of you later. But for right now, cheers. I'm tagging out. Bye.